Fatu, Mirada. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another horror movie review with me, Angela of Morbid Heart Designs. And I'm so excited to bring this classic to life in front of you. We're going to be talking about Evil Dead from 1981 versus Evil Dead from 2013. Now technically 2013 is considered a remake, however none of the character names are the same. But the dynamics of the story and the plot are extremely similar. Five college students take time off to have a vacation in a remote cabin where they discover a book and an audio tape, which just so happens to be evil profound. The words from this book are read out loud, unleashing an unknown evil unlike any you've ever seen. The students must fight for their lives in order to survive what they've unleashed. So that's the basic premise of both movies. There's different character dynamics, different character interactions, but they all play out extremely similar, which I'm not opposed to them doing. The 2013 remake does give more of a reason for them to be in the woods. Our character Mia, who is the main character, is addicted to drugs and they are out in the cabin to keep her away from getting drugs while she basically goes cold turkey to get it out of her system. That's the only major lot difference between them. Now, The Evil Dead from 81, the first time I saw it was like in 2002, junior, senior year of high school, somewhere around that. And it was my first really weird, scary movie. Little on the verge of not being Mormon me was not sure at all how to take any of this movie. I will say I thoroughly enjoyed it more watching it this time than I did at that time because my movie tastes have definitely developed. I do think the mythos of this entire universe is utterly fascinating with the demons and the Necronomicon. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Evil Dead, let's go into a brief history of this whole classic. This movie really elevated Sam Raimi's career and he is like a staple in horror now, as well as Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell is a cheesy, brilliant actor. His style is just so unique and not very many people can pull it off the way that he does. This movie launched both of their careers. It spun off into so many different things. You've got various video games, comic books, movie sequels. You've got the remake we're gonna be talking about as well. And you even have a TV series that was launched in 2015 that had several seasons. I thoroughly like the first season as a side note, not so much the latter. However, the episode with the puppets, oh my God, is the best episode out of any episode in that entire series. Watch that one. The character Ash is the only character who really launched throughout the universe that was created here to the point that you have comic books where he faces Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees, which is just a show the caliber of the cult following this movie has. Oh, did you also know this was a musical? I learned in the past year that this was a musical. I haven't seen it yet. I still want to see it. It's going to happen one day. Okay, so now that you see what happened with this movie, many of you probably already know it, let's get into my thoughts and the reviews and the whatnots. Now, the 81 version. If it was made the exact same way it was today, this movie would flop. It would be like the equivalent of high school students putting on something, in my opinion. Hate me if you want, but that's what I think. However, at the time this was made, it was extremely innovative, very unique, very different. And I think that's what made it stand out with the horror movie crowd, the unique things it had to offer. I did watch a remastered Blu-ray and I'm really sad that it's so grainy. It doesn't come out as well as other remastered stuff has. It makes me sad that the film's degraded to a point where it might not be something extremely salvageable. So if you do wanna watch the original, I wanna give you a heads up on that, just so you know to expect it. But you'll still enjoy the story if you like horror. This is definitely not for the light of heart in my opinion. There's a lot of gore, a lot of blood, a lot of bodily fluids of a lot of sort, a lot of really fucked up shit, a lot of fucked up visuals. I mean, there's a tree rape scene. No one warned me about the first time I watched this movie. Little almost not Mormon me didn't know what to do with it. It was very disturbing. And I will say 
the remake was just as disturbing. It, yeah, yeah. Tree rape, just to warn you. Even though this has some fucked up shit, I love how fucked up it is. I don't think that's an uncommon thing. I think that's what draws a lot of people to this movie and this universe. So, Evil Dead 2013, same story. The effects were a lot better. It, of course, the makeup's a lot better. So many things were well done. I feel that the remake held true to the original fucked upness, the original visuals, a lot of what made the original what it is, but it definitely used the modern things we have with makeup and effects and gore in an extremely effective way. They did a phenomenal job recreating the cabin. As a side note, the cabin from the original did get burnt down when some drunk people went there and fucked shit up for everyone. So while it's left is the chimney, I don't know if it's currently up, but it was for some time. But I really like how they redid the entire set. You've actually even got the car from the original at one point all rusted and decayed and just sitting there. And I loved that minor detail of it. You got the same shed. It just was recreated so effectively. Like set crew, you rocked that shit. I really enjoyed how they connected all the characters in the remake versus the original. It felt more authentic, but just as fucked up. Overall, I would rewatch the remake more than the original. Please don't come at me. I know this has such a hardcore following, but it's just, it's just what I think. You can disagree and we can still be friends. It's possible. Speaking of friends, let's hear what Strange Monkey has to say about Evil Dead. I, d I gotta say right off the bat, if I'm going out on vacation or whatever with friends, I am not going to do the following. I'm not going in some strange and abandoned cam cabin all the way out in the woods in the middle of nowhere and spend the night. No, I will not do that. And second, I'm not going to go to the cellar in this cabin and start reading a random book that looks deformed and it's like from another world. That's what it looks like. And I am and number three, I am not going to start reading passages from this book so this entity could come in through the woods and possess all of my friends. No, sir. I don't think so. Some of these scenes are pretty intense, and then there are some that just fall flat on its face and it they have not aged well. Now, like some of the kills in this scene are fucking awesome. You know, and then the uh, there's the possession scenes with uh, like for example, Cheryl Ash Williams' sister. She gets put down in the uh, in the cellar, and she starts like you know pushing up against the cellar door. Join us! Join us! Blah, 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 blah. It's crazy, but I'm not going to give away. Hey, but you know what? You should have watched this movie ages ago because there are spoilers. The special effects, makeup, holy shit, that is still on point today. I love it. Everybody who ended up being possessed in this movie, or all of the wounds and everything, it's just, it all looks so fucking good. Um, you know, when you're working on a, I guess it's a low budget independent film, gotta, you know, work with what you have and improvise, and it worked. Sam Raimi is a genius, and in the end, this film, you know, ended up being a cult classic. This film helped launch the careers of Sam Raimi, Robert Tabbert, and... The almighty Bruce Campbell, Mr. Ash Williams, who is now, at this point, a horror movie icon. And after this film came out, we got two sequels, a remake, reimagining, whatever you want to call it, and then we got the sequel show, Ash vs. Evil Dead, which continues the story. Uh, four video games and a bunch of comic books. What a legacy to leave behind. Um, in my opinion, out of the trilogy, this is my least favorite. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, this was the darkest one. But I think the sequels are a lot more stronger than the original film. But either way, The Evil Dead is pretty damn good, if you ask me.
And yes, we did ask you. Thank you for participating in this video, Strange Monkey. Make sure to go over to his channel and subscribe. It is hard to pick a favorite death in this movie, but I do think I have to pick the opening sequence from the remake. I, I don't, you know, I'm not gonna say anything. It's brilliant. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to ruin it. Go watch it. I love the opening sequence, the opening death. It really sucked you into the universe so fucking fast. It was blowing your mind. Moral of the story. If you see a book and you don't understand the words, you probably shouldn't say them out loud because you could summon utter evil that's going to destroy your ass because you're stupid. Now for my writing. I actually write both of these five out of five zombie proofs. Even though I had some negative things to say, I can't deny how influential it has been for the horror genre as well as what it's been able to accomplish in creating a universe of its own. It's very cool in my opinion that it has been able to do that. I hope you've enjoyed the review of these original versus remake. These are definitely both great movies that I highly recommend. Each has its own amazing qualities that makes it stand out above the other, which I didn't really touch on. I'm not going to, because this is already getting to be a long video. Despite giving them both five, I will say I prefer the 2013 over the original. What are your thoughts? Do you hate me because I prefer the remake over the original? Do you prefer Army of Darkness over the original? I mean, that's acceptable too. That was a crazy ass movie. You want to talk about weird. That one gets fucking weird. Maybe I'll review that one later this year because I've been wanting to do a Ash with a Chainsaw art piece and that would be like perfect. So yep, that's happening. Putting that on the calendar. You'll see that later this year. Thank you so much to my patrons. Thank you for watching the video to this point at, or as far as you got and you're not here. I appreciate whatever time of your life you are willing to give me and what I do. So from my dark heart to yours, have a wonderful day and please don't die before my next video.